Good morning, America. Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Good morning to you, those of you in Kentucky. This is a warning video. The Lord has given me a word from the Holy Spirit, and he said, earthquake, earthquake, earthquake. I sought him out through prayer, and he's been moving in me since January of 2024. He has shown me where we're at in the Bible. Um, the Lord had me read the book of Revelations. He gave me two visions to help me to know through prayer where he wanted me to go in the Bible. When I, I usually read three chapters a night. Haven't been doing that since I started this YouTube channel, but before I started the YouTube channel back, which is what I've been encouraged to do after I started receiving these warnings. Um, I used to read three chapters a night. Well, uh, when he gave me a vision of Revelations, Revelations, um, then I went there and I started reading at the first chapter, went to the third chapter, didn't get no movement from the Lord. The second night when I got into the book of Revelations, I went from uh, chapter four to chapter six. And when I got to the third seal, the Lord moved in me. Now, the third seal is famine, okay? So, um, in order to get these videos out, I'm going to try and give you as much as I can reading the scripture on by, by this video. But you really need to go there yourself and read and study God's word uh, or pull your Bibles out now. So the third seal is verse Revelation 6, verse 5. It says, And when he broke the third seal, I heard the third living creature saying, Come, I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hands. Verse 6, And I heard something like a voice in the center of the four living creatures saying, a quart of wheat for a denarius and three quarts of barley for a denarius and do not damage the oil or the wine which i've understood for many years through a lot of pastors that the oil and the wine represents the anointing power of the church and the holy spirit and um the wine also represents the newborn um believers the believers in christ uh, is the considered the wine, the infilling of the Holy Spirit in each one of us. So, but the Lord wants me to come to you guys today, uh, Kentucky. I've given out other alarms and alerts for Arkansas and Missouri. Uh, this is the, I believe, the 24th video. I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel and please go back to all the other videos and began to listen to them day and night as you're traveling in your vehicle. Put this, your cell phone on your dash, pull up the channel, pull up the video that you want to go to next that's it's next on your history in your YouTube area. And I wanna encourage you to watch all the videos. I want you to encourage, uh, I wanna encourage you to share them with your church, your family, your friends, your neighbors. Uh, and began to do a mighty work spreading the rumors that everyone might be warned. Um, but the Lord wants you to know that you're living in an area, um, if you're living in an area from the Mississippi River, a hundred miles, and I'm going to say a little plus a hundred miles past a hundred miles, because the Lord has sent a multitude of rain for about two months straight. So I believe the Mississippi River is at the top of its banks, if not over and stretched out, I don't know. But I'm just telling you that these three earthquakes the Holy Spirit spoke of is gonna be in one day. It's gonna hit Arkansas because I so believe the pattern of God works and he's got his reasoning for it to be going up towards the Great Lakes. So the investigation that I did, um, the Lord helped me to find a video on YouTube that's very old, uh, and it talked about the, uh, the great earthquakes of the 1811, uh, 
earthquakes of the New, Mid New Madrid fault line. It talked about the earthquakes that hit in that area in the New Madrid fault line all the way into 1812. These mega earthquakes went on for 54 days and earthquakes throughout America went on for five months. Now there's a lot of things in the Bible that um, are done in five month sequences, especially Noah's Ark in the beginning after the r rain for 40 days and 40 nights receded, uh, it literally took God five months to get the water level down to where Noah and his family could leave the ark and begin to go across the land. So that's the first five months. The other area that God talks about five months, which would be a twin and it would match, uh, would be in the book of Revelations when the Lord God sends uh, a tormenting creature that he's going to create and it's going to torture man for five months and they will seek death and will not be able to find it. That's in Revelations 9. I encourage you to read it, but it says very clearly there. Here it is in verse 5, it, Revelations 9 verse 5. And they were not permitted to kill one, kill anyone, but to torment for five months. And their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings a man. So the fact that the New Madrid fault line and all America had earthquakes for five months straight, I don't know what else is going to come of this, but God is going to allow this great shakening. And he's going to allow famine. He's going to allow earthquakes. He has, after I read Revelation 6, and I'm sorry if I'm talking too fast, you can replay the video and listen to it a second and third time to soak up the word that's given here today. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we have a lot of things that are about to hit us. And the Lord just wants you to know that he loves you. He is sorry for all those of you that live in the New Mandarin fault line area. And you didn't know, and this nation should have, after 1811 and 1812, they should have made a national uh, uh, announcement that all the land within 100 miles of the Mississippi River, um, it should have been just national forest. And they shouldn't have allowed anyone to go back in there. But they don't know the workings of God. And God is the creator of all eclipse. Everyone knows that this nation received three eclipses from 2017, another one in 2023. And the day before America received the eclipse of 2023, the second seal was opened and war hit Israel. And that's why the third seal is next. So like the Holy Spirit's moving all over me right now. I got goosebumps chill bumps, whatever you want to call them, from head to toe. He's showing me, sister, you're witness in the truth. So uh, the, third, the second seal was open the day that Israel had war hit them on the front line, the day before America's second eclipse. The third eclipse was in May of 2024, and the devil has been allowed to steal the word eclipse from our Bibles. It's supposed to be in the scripture, for um, the crucifixion, the devil has been allowed to take it out through mankind, working in their minds to remove it so that the church wouldn't understand where we're at. So the devil is a liar and a thief, and he can't, comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Doesn't it say that in the scripture? Anyway, God loves you, Kentucky. You need to get on your map quest right now and find out how far do you live from the Mississippi River. When the first three earthquakes come in one day, and they're going to hit Arkansas first, Missouri, and Kentucky on the very first day. I do not know if they're going to be over a nine on the Richter scale. 
I have a video in the mix of these 24 videos that gives you precise details of the size and the time and the state of all the earthquakes that happened in one day. That's why the Holy Spirit spoke, earthquake, earthquake, earthquake. There will be three earthquakes in one day to literally rattle this nation. And that will be the day that the third seal is open and famine and earthquakes will begin. The Lord showed me also, uh, as I read Revelation 6 and the third seal, the Lord moved in my spirit immediately and prompted me to go to Matthew 24, and he had me start at the first verse. As, he got in the, got to, as I got to the seventh verse, the Lord moved on me mightily, and he showed me, now you know in Matthew 24 where America and all the earth stands, uh, where we're at in Matthew 24. So he revealed to me that we are in Matthew 24, verse 7, and famine and earthquakes will begin on the day of the New Mandarin fault line earthquakes as they come forth. He will have opened the third seal that day. The things that happen after that are horrendous and horrible. So America, a lot of things are coming. I so believe that God will raise up Mr. Trump, he is our King David. A lot of people don't believe that, but God's going to use him like he did King David for the nation of Israel, Jerusalem, and all the kingdoms around Israel. God used King David mightily. Now he's going to use Trump. He repeats things over and over in time. We have some of the children of Israel living here in America, and of course some living in Israel, they went back. Um, but the Lord God wants you to know he's here to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you, but it's up to you to repent. He wants many of you that are Christians to begin to open up your homes and build home churches. He is also in the mix of this third seal. He's in the mix of judging his church. As he judges his church, people will be falling out of the churches like ants running out of an ant mound that someone just stepped on. They run out of it quickly to rebuild. Well, the Lord wants you to be the ant workers, and he wants you to rebuild his church, but in your homes. Your homes are to be wilderness church, front porch churches. You're to set your tithe money to a side and begin to build his church. But number one, you're to pray with him, have a mini vacation or a seven day vacation with God only, and scoot aside all your um, pleasures of TV and everything else and get with the Lord and repent and get cleansed. A lot of work needs to be done and these rumors need to be spread like in the days of Jesus and he had to eventually go out to the wilderness to preach just like John the Baptist. So there you go. Jesus was a walk and talk in church. He did not need a building. Although we do need shelter, and so that's why he's wanting you to turn your homes into a home church. As he judges his church, you will see great is the need for the home churches. And uh, your home church, I will discuss that more in the next video, but let me move on. The Lord God wants you to know you can repent right now today, and he will pour out Romans 8:28 in your life, okay? He will cleanse you, utterly cleanse you, and began to give you a new heart and greater wisdom in your mind to accomplish building these home churches. If you're not saved, I have videos on my channel about hope and salvation. Uh, I even have them that I did years ago, uh, earlier on in my YouTube channel. Um, but let me read the Lord's strong word about forgiving you of your sins. And if you are um, a lost person, you have never had Christ, he died for you. He stretched out his hands and he died for you. This is not a joke, it's a real thing. I am a living testimony of, to you right now on this video. I'm not into TV. I'm not into the way I used to live. I used to be a cusser and a drinker and I used to do drugs and alcohol and hang out with the wrong people. 
I have gotten all that out of my life. I'm a changed person. I'm a born again Christian and I love the Lord and I love the Lord's work and I love ministering and helping other people. That's my church and it's an on the go church. I work at work. I minister to people, those that will listen. Uh, we talk about end time stuff, even with non-Christians. And I talk about it with Christians. So um, that's my home church. I'm an on-the-go church. I'm in my car, back at home, back at work. So that's my church. Your church can be that kind of church too. He'll help you to build your church, okay? So whether you're working or not working, uh, it doesn't matter. Either way, he can help you to build your church and give him a few hours a week to get your church organized, built, and get the uh, Facebook pages open, Twitter, Instagram, whatever apps he wants you to use, he will help you to do all those things to spread these videos and we can work together as the nets of hope and put the net over America, feeding them the wisdom and knowledge of the Lord God Almighty because he wants to save millions of billions of people. Please be a part of this event. And those of you in the Fallout area, please again go to MapQuest and check and see how far do you live from the Mississippi River. Please warn family and friends that you know do live in that area and help them to find these videos, share these videos with them. So I'm going to read to you Micah 7 verses 18 through 20. Who is a God like you who pardons iniquity and passes over the rebellious acts of the remnant of his possession? He does not retain his anger forever because he delights in unchanging love. Did you not hear that? Unchanging love. He delights in forgiving you. He delights in making all things new. He does not delight in judging you and making it permanent. He does not like judging you and destroying you. But if you're going to continue to live idly by, you're in danger, especially as a Christian. And as a non-Christian, if you don't want to seek God, you're riding the fence between the works of this world, which is the devil's works, and the works that God wants you to be involved in so he can save you. When you die, there are two worlds to go to. One is heaven, where you will live in a paradise that's so much better than earth. Everything is provided. There is no darkness. It's daytime 24-7, and there is no tears. There's no sorrow. Uh, there's peace and joy, and there's rewards for the work you do on earth. And he assures many as you serve him, he will give you a mansion and fill it with blessings and gifts. Okay, so let me get back to the word. So because he delights in unchanging love, he will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. I have a dear sister on this channel. We talked yesterday and she has repented and she is so uh, turning her life around. She's flipping the tables and she knows that the Lord Jesus doesn't lie and that he has made her life all new again. And she's ready to do uh, Facebook or whatever ministry the Lord calls her to do. So she started her three to seven day vacation already with him yesterday morning. So I'm praising the Lord for her mighty movement. Thank you, Father God, that somebody's listening. And then, so he will tread our iniquities underfoot. Yes, you will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. The question is, do you believe that? He can save you and turn your life around. Or if you have been lukewarm or cold or warm and you've not been hot and on fire for doing things for the Lord, well, turn your life around now and have a vacation with him. Put family and friends to the side and spend time with your Lord, refreshing your love relationship with him. Worship him. Spend time on your knees. If you're handicapped, spend time laying down, talking with him. And just bow down your heart if you're handicapped and you can't get on your knees. He accepts that. Okay, and then verse 20. You will give truth to Jacob an unchanging love. There's that word again. To Abraham. Oh, Abraham was not perfect. 
God gave him unchanging love. And he made all things new with Abraham every day. Because you remember Abraham and Sarah both sinned and uh, he got with a maidservant and that's not where the child was to come from. It was to come from Sarah. So see, he made all things new again and again and again for Abraham and Sarah because he loved them. Jesus Christ came from the seed of this man's body that later on down the line through the lineage of his uh, family tree. So God has unchanging love, like he says, and he's all merciful and he can make all things new. I'm experienced. I have a video, three or four videos from this video that talks about God judged me this past Saturday. Listen to that video. It'll change your life. And let me tell you the vision he showed me in that video was powerful. And he's still showing me the 9-11 red, white, and blue lights are coming. How many will listen? So he showed me that he's going to make all things new when those red, white, and blue lights go to strobing and these 9-11 events happen. I will be transformed. I will have a new wine skin. I will um, be like a 30-year-old walking in the flesh. I will be healed from all disease and sickness and imperfections. I will have a great wisdom and knowledge. And he showed me one other friend that will have the same thing as she uh, makes her faith stronger and stronger. And that just so happens to be the sister that I talked to yesterday <laughs> that is transforming her life as of yesterday. And I just praise God for that. Anyway, back to the scripture which you swore to our forefathers from the days of old. So he has unchanging love and he's always looking forward to making all things new and forgiving us and cleansing us with the blood of the lamb. Now then the Lord wants you to know he doesn't want to destroy any of you that live in the new Mandarin fault line. He doesn't. And so I'm going to read to you a powerful word from the book of Jonah, the very last verse in the fourth chapter in the 11th verse. And it's not God's fault that you live where you're at, and it's not your fault. It's our government's fault that they did not make this a national forest area after the great destruction of 1811 and 1812. So again, three mega earthquakes are gonna rise in one day, and no one knows the day or the hour but he has shown me this is going to happen just any day now this year. And earthquakes will follow after the third seal is open, will follow for five months straight. So we're not getting out of it easy. And he's going to allow bridges to collapse. He's going to allow ship channels to be destroyed. He's going to allow railroads bridges to be destroyed. We're not going to be able to get our food and supplies like we've been getting. He's got to bring this back to the time of the age of the wilderness season of this church in order to get your attention to save you, to save you. And those that have been lukewarm, cold and warm, he wants to get your attention to repent or he will have to judge you. He doesn't want to, but you're the one that has made the choice to run off from God, not him. You've made that choice. So again, Jonah 4 and verse 11, and then I'm going to end this video. Should I not have compassion on Nineveh? Now the Lord was talking to Jonah because Jonah was nothing but a complainer from the time that God snatched him from out of the sea in the belly of a well and then spit Jonah out on the very land of Nineveh and had him go preach, even though he didn't want to. He was running from God. So anyway, should I not have compassion on Nineveh, the great city in which there were more than 120,000 persons who did not know the difference between their right and their left hand, as well as many animals? Now, the Lord wants to have compassion on you. I'm so believing that the Lord's going to move in mighty miracles um, like the days in, of Exodus. As you begin to have faith and build your home churches, I believe that God can cause your home church in your yard, your farmland, 
to be completely dry, even if you're living within the 100 mile radius of the river. I believe he can do that. I believe he has the power to bring forth a distinction between God's people and the sinful world. And those people that walk right out of that water onto your dry land are going to be amazed. Now then, if you don't believe, you go back and you just kind of meditate on the book of Exodus and all the plagues the Lord poured out. He made it very clear to Pharaoh through Moses that he's going to cause a distinction between the children of Israel and their land, their property, their animals, uh, between them and the Egyptians. And God did not bring death on his people. He didn't bring sickness or plagues on his people. He separated them, and they were not affected during the time of the judgment of on Pharaoh. Now, Pharaoh, God hardened his heart, and God literally destroyed his city, and he was stu too stupid to recognize that something was going on with him mentally and in his heart for him to not do a check. Hey, look, what's going on around your land here? You know, he should have repented to God and let the children of Israel go, but he wouldn't do it. And God put all these miracles and wonders into his life and literally destroyed Egypt from the inside out. And finally, Pharaoh let the children of Israel go with the last plague. So I believe God's about to pour out some miracles and show distinction between these home churches and the fallout of the new Mandarin fault line. Are you ready to join him and be a part of the miracles? Are you ready to join him and possibly receive you a new wineskin and power to heal the sickness and disease and to regrow arms and legs and save these people that are going to be coming out of this mass exodus of the new Mandarin fault line falling out? I love you, brothers and sisters, and the next video is going to be about building your home churches in Kentucky. Please share these videos with family, friends, subscribe to this channel, and please start praying about building a home church if you're already a Christian, and if you're fisting to be born again, I just want to encourage you, ask the Lord Jesus to come live in your heart and to be Lord and master of your life and to save you. Listen to my videos on hope and salvation. Listen to them slowly so that you can understand. I give scripture there. I talk to you very slowly and in detail, and it will help you to bring forth your salvation. Please put your name in comments. It's the altar of God, and let everyone praise the Lord that you just got saved. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Spread this word like wildfire. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good day, guys.